So, uh, Jacob and Rowan, uh, you guys have been working together for the past five years. Am I correct on that? About five years? Correct. Yes. Yes, sir. So, how has the dynamics changed from working on the first project that many years ago to working on the Wonder Years reboot this past year? Oh, man. I, I'll tackle this one. Um, five years ago, it was my first show. Um, for Jacob, he had worked on several shows before. Um, and I'm coming from the pop R&B radio world. So my ideas around music and music creation are based around three minutes and 30 seconds, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in, in, in that world, you can spend two weeks on finding a snare sound, you know, or the mm -hmm. right kick sound or just the perfect synth. And I found out quickly that in film music, you can't be precious. It's so fast. Right. Mm -hmm. And that first show, you know, luckily it wasn't a network show because it allowed us to kind of get the process down, allowed me to learn the differences between a television show and producing a song. Um, and so now for Wonder Years, I mean, we're doing a show a week. And quite mm -hmm. frankly, right now we're working on literally five episodes at once. And so from, you know, 2017, 16 ish to now, it's we've tightened our process. We have a assembly line approach where, you know, we can get things done very quickly. Um, I'm not so precious about a snare sound um, while also being able to deliver um, the ideas quickly. Um, and I think, you know, we, we I'd like to hear that question again in five years, because I think in another five years we'll be we have mastered um, the fusion of our great strengths together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's really interesting. Um, you know, the more we work together, too, we can reference our own work together. And a lot of uh, the filmmakers we're working with, uh, they have a back catalog of ours to talk about. Um, you know, because the the pace is so quick on a lot of these shows, the picture editors will will start and they'll say, "Hey, can you guys just send us a couple hundred tracks of yours?" And they start temping and working with it, so that when we start working on something, it's our own music we're hearing, and they can kind of reference that. And then we get a sense of like, okay, which of our musicians that we love working with are we going to be calling for this particular job? Oh, interesting. So building on that then, what was kind of the process you guys used for the Wonders? Is it very much that they've already temped stuff ahead of time? Or like, how did you guys kind of come up with the sound for this? How did you create those snare sounds, that groovy mm -hmm. beat that we hear in the first couple episodes so far? Man, I, a lot of it was because of the pandemic. You know, we've said this um, quite a bit that in 2020, we were just kind of wondering what was going to happen, right? Production had halted. We were working on a project at the time that we started around 2019 that we figured would end in 2020. And then it just went dark. We heard nothing. And so, mm -hmm. you know, there wasn't a lot of production period. And so we we're like, you know, in this time, how can we stay creative and not go insane? Um, and we just honestly co put our brains together and decided, hey, we're going to put together a project, an album. Maybe it'll get licensed or maybe it'll just be for fun, a, a kind of a, a heart project. And it just happened to be 60s music. And so, mm -hmm. you know, a few months after doing that, our agents hit us up and said, hey, guys, you want to take um, a, a, a general meeting with some of the guys at Fox? And we took the meeting and they're like, hey, do you want a demo for the Wonder Years? We're like, yeah. And they were mm -hmm. like, it's set in the 60s. We're like, actually, mm -hmm. we have 25 songs already like done. Like, so we shot those over immediately. Then they gave us a brief. We went in specifically for the Wonder Years. And so by the time the pilot was actually being shot and we had to deliver music, we had lots of music ready. A lot mm -hmm. of it we had to conform, obviously, to picture and make it work. Um, but that's kind of how it started. And we were blessed enough to get in early so that they could temp with our music and we could establish the sound instead of, you know, us hearing other things um, that kind of drove the musical landscape of the show. So that's kind of how it worked for us. We're definitely very fortunate. Mm -hmm. And there's also a, a different thing happening now with all film and television where, you know, you're starting to feel much more of a blur between needle drops and score. In the past, you know, the 80s and 90s, I think it was it was very obvious when it was a mm -hmm. needle drop and when the score started, the score sounded like it was very sort of, you know, not expected, but, you know, you would hear strings and like piano and just the way it was mixed just felt like score. Uh, but I think a lot of modern audiences 
um, are now getting accustomed to like where the musical soundscape is so um, like uh, there's so much deliberate effort put into making everything seamless mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know we've had a few friends of ours reach out and they, you know they were like oh we couldn't was there any score in the in the wonder years pilot and we're like yeah there was a whole lot and they were like every because everything sounded like it was part of the the needle drop mm -hmm. sort of sound and we were like that was on purpose i mean to be honest our idea was the score of the show would be performed by bill's band I mean, if you've seen the pilot, the father on the show is a is a funk soul jazz musician, and he has a group. And our idea is like, wouldn't it be neat if the entire score could be performed by his band? Uh, so that's the sound where we wanted to live in. Nice. That's very cool. I was going to ask about neo drops because there are a few in here from Green Onions and Step Back. Did you guys have a, the option to choose them, or were they kind of pre-selected and you guys had to kind of work around that? What did that well, we, look like? We, we've been asked for suggestions and certain things. And specifically, um, there's a great moment at the end of the episode. Um, and there were so many ideas thrown out um, for changes going to come. And obviously, mm -hmm. we wanted changes going to come. That's the ultimate. But they also asked us to have references for just in case. You know, mm -hmm. so some of it's it kind of may work like that, but we're not picking the uh, the needle drops we got to shout out our amazing music supervisor amani burt blackerack smith he's been amazing mm -hmm. at picking the sound choice for the needle drops um and all the licensing actually and it's a cool little trade-off because he'll tell us hey i might do this or here's a couple examples of what i have in mind there and then we'll have a seamless transition in and out of mm -hmm. some of those needle drops depending on the scene um, but mm -hmm. we're not picking them but we have been asked like hey guys what do you think about this which is a cool collaborative um effort mm -hmm. yeah amani definitely i mean they're the music supervisor on the show uh, we'll throw a lot of options and even we've had to create uh, several pieces of music where the actors are performing them on camera mm -hmm. um, and uh, <clears throat> for direction he'll come up with a playlist of music from the 60s or 70s like hey let's get something with this kind of energy this kind of approach uh, so I mean it's it's a real sort of collaborative team effort uh, combined with of course the filmmakers direction yeah that's actually really cool i was i was curious about that mm -hmm. um and then like i guess moving on from just that to there's a lot more as you said performed on screen not as much in the pilot but i presume later in the show there's going to be a lot more of that on screen music do you guys um have a role to play in maybe not as much like conducting but like what is your role when it comes to shaping the music and the sound of the on screen performances and even the uh, original songs you guys created for the show. I mean, it's it's kind of all encompassing, actually. Like like Jacob said, it's a very collaborative effort. You know, we, we got to like we got to record literally Dule singing these songs. So he's he's asking, hey, how should this sound or how how was my performance? And then I'm asking, and Jacob's asking, hey, how do you think? What do you think about performing like this or trying this? What would Bill do? You know, and there's that mm. back and forth as it relates to you know how everything is appearing on screen and we obviously we don't want to give you any spoilers um but it's kind of definitely a um a all hands on deck approach i would say and what's really cool is being able to make these songs some of which were written for a female voice come to come alive with a male voice right mm -hmm. and then sending it off to production and getting the emails like guys this is amazing or hey guys try this or what about this lyric you know like let's try mm -hmm. this so it's been a real cool collaborative approach and then there, there are a lot of on-screen performances where you know Dulé. um uh, we don't want to give it away, but other actors in the show are going to be playing instruments. And, you know, we've actually created little tutorial videos for them to, to sort of say, this is how your hands should look. This is what you should be doing. This is how it, it should feel or how you should stand when you're playing this, that, and the other, just to, to help the actors get, get ready mm -hmm. for their own performance, just to get into the character. Uh, because we definitely don't want them to be bogged down with like, how am I supposed to hold this thing? You know, mm -hmm. some of them have uh, a lot of musical experience. Um, I don't know. EJ is uh, taking music lessons now uh, because the show is very, very 
driven by music, not just, you know, in the soundscape, but even the story. It's integral to the storytelling. And you'll see that as the season plays out, it's it's written very smartly uh, from uh, Saladin. Um, you can tell it's written by someone who grew up in a musical family. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the stories that he comes up with, it's like, oh, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to just like kind of take a stab at that unless you had a personal experience with it. So um, it's like it's literally a dream gig for us because we're getting to do things that like, oh, this never happens on other shows. Never. Yeah, that's so awesome. Um, talking about character headspace real quick. How did you kind of uh, shape to get that youthful energy into Dean's uh, younger performance? Because there's song cues where it's like clearly like, oh, he's reminiscing on something. It's kind of happy. And then there's times when it's like realizing uh, the loss of the wonder years Mm -hmm. and the song cue shapes away from that. And it just mellows out, I'd say. Um, How did you kind of shape that into the music? What what was that like? I mean, I, you know, we, we've been asked a lot of questions around, like, how difficult was it to make music centered around this space, you know, with a black family going on, g- growing up in the 60s, you know, the racial component, the social component, um, the political component. And the same answer, I think, would apply to this question is that you allow the picture to tell you what it needs, right? And you allow mm-hmm. the relationships on screen to tell you what they need, right? And make it as simple as it can be. Right? Is this is a boy with his crush? This is a boy with his dad. This is a boy with his best friend who he feels crazy feelings about. This is a boy with his sister. This is a sister with his with her mother. You know, it's like mm-hmm. you try and focus in on what the the picture is telling you, and you stay there so you don't do too much or get so lost that you can't help the story um, come across. I think one one major driving force behind this is making everything feel urgent and present even though the narrator is you know voicing this from the future he's an adult and looking back the show is in real time we're experiencing this in in the present with these characters and so musically we wanted to draw on the instruments and maybe the approach the chord progressions the the rhythms of that era but it's it's not written to feel like um a memory and i think that's like a big thing that sort of changed how we we were approaching it once we once we dove in uh because the uh, some of the original approaches we had didn't quite work once you saw it the picture because you're like oh wow like no this feels now it doesn't feel like you know someone's saying like a long time ago you know it's it's got like a very um like in the in reality feeling to it Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Um, you guys mentioned this project is a dream project. Uh, how did it challenge you guys as musicians and where do you go from here? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I would say just the sheer speed. I think we're both, you know, we're both challenged by how much writing we have to do. The cool thing about this, I think God knows what he's doing, right? Mm-hmm. Like the cool mm-hmm. thing is we're writing music that we actually love to listen to and make right that i can't stress that enough because when you're working on five episodes and you got to make sure the process is going according to plan so we don't get lost in what cues we're doing and what story we're trying to tell and what theme we're trying to convey um i think it's it's challenging us to make sure that our process is tight um and that we're delivering not only timely but at the highest level we can Mm -hmm. right and Mm -hmm. that we're not you know we're pacing ourselves because this is a marathon we plan to be talking about this show for a long time Mm -hmm. so in in order for us to be able to do that we have to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves as as humans right and then taking care of the story as the amazing piece of art that it is and i think you know from here we see ourselves doing many more of these and features um, we're all obviously still working on a couple of other projects, one namely being the Nicki Minaj documentary um, that should be dropping shortly here. And throughout the whole process of Wonder Years, we've re- we've been working on other projects as well. Mm-hmm. So being able to juggle um, while also delivering at the highest level, I think, is where we take our careers. I'd say the big challenge here is uh, that I was surprised about was the, the handling of comedy. And... You know, this for anyone in the industry, 
comedy is really difficult um, from a, from a music perspective, and has to be decided on for a long term project like a like an episodic you know show. Uh, do you mark the comedy? You know, have you, have you ever heard the term Mickey Mouse? You know, like if somebody makes a joke, are you going to hear like da 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 dee da? You know, uh, and there are a lot of shows. You know, they. The Office, for instance, has no music, like mm -hmm. none. Modern Family had no music. 30 Rock has music everywhere. It's mm -hmm. constantly going. It's marking every joke. There's flutes and clarinets and trumpets. And it's like, I mean, it's the polar opposite of Modern Family or uh, The Office. And both approaches are, are valid. So in any at the beginning of this show, we had a lot of exploring to do to figure out how are we going to handle it, you know? And, you know, in truth, the show is, is a dramedy. There's a lot of heavy topics that are discussed. And, you know, in any person's life growing up, there's going to be serious issues that you're faced with. But, I mean, this is about a black family in Alabama in the 60s. There's a hell of a lot of serious issues taking place. So, um, yeah, so that, that, was a, that was a big challenge. Uh, we're still discovering it because mm -hmm. there are certain moments that are just hilarious and you know you're like we put music in you're like this is so good but do we want to put music here and it's mm -hmm. it's a discussion you know it's ultimately the showrunners and the network's decision uh but before they decide they want to hear give us some options you know let's trial and error some things uh, mm -hmm. i would say hands down that was uh, for me definitely a big challenge fantastic thank you guys for your time uh this has been a real treat talking with you guys and uh yeah, uh, be sure to check out The Wonder Years, which is streaming on Hulu and is uh, available now. Thank you guys for your time.